I'm doing this, okay, let me see. Got it, okay. Are you doing it? I'm doing it, right? Okay, I'm trying to get it. Can y'all hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, oh, okay, so I don't know what's going on with my computer. Hold on one second. I'm trying to, it just like froze on me. Hold on, I'm going to come in and I'm going to go out and come back in, okay? I'm trying to get, can y'all hear me? We can hear you, so, and we're we're live now, too. Okay, I'm going to try to go, oh, God, I'm going to I'm gonna have to come back in. Wanda, I don't know what's going on with this computer. I'm going to go out and come back in, okay? Okay. Delegate for now, we are live, too, so I'm going to let you know. We're live now, too. Okay, I'm going to try to go, oh, God, I'm going to You can put yourself on mute. We'll, we'll let you. All right. I think there's some feedback. Is it from? Okay. So good morning. Good morning. This is Delegate Pam Queen. Welcome to the Banking, Consumer Protection, and Commercial Law Subcommittee meeting. This is today. It's March the 11th. We're going to discuss HB 259, um, Commercial Law, Consumer Protection, Biometrics, Identifiers, Privacy Bill. And so um, I do want to just say we are going to, for this bill, uh, talk about some of the issues. We probably will not have a vote today. I don't think we'll have everyone in subcommittee to do that. Uh, we'll try to schedule that for Monday. But we do want to talk through any of the remaining concerns or issues with the bill. Council has been working very hard uh, based on the uh, the committee hearing to address issues that have been raised. And so we're gonna walk through those and address any other concerns. So I'm gonna turn this over to you, um, Council okay. Tiffany Clark. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so House Bill 259 generally regulates the use of biometric identifiers by private entities. More specifically, it requires a private entity in possession of biometric identifiers to develop a policy establishing a retention schedule and destruction guidelines. This policy must be available to the public. Uh, it requires a private entity to, if requested by an individual, disclose certain information relating to biometric identifiers of the individual free of charge. It prohibits the private entity from selling, leasing, trading, or otherwise profiting from an individual's biometric identifiers. It prohibits a private entity from collecting, using, disclosing or otherwise disseminating, disseminating an, an individual's biometric identifiers without written consent or if it's required by a warrant or a subpoena, that's okay. It also prohibits a private entity that contracts with a processor to process or store biometric identifiers from allowing the processor to collect or profit um, or do anything else other than the purpose um, of the collection. And it authorizes an individual alleging a violation of the bill to bring a civil action against the offending party. Are there any questions? So do you want me just to go to the amendments, Madam Chair? Any questions? Okay, let's go to the amendments. Okay, um, so first um, I sent out a reprint to everyone and I apologize for not numbering the reprint, but the way that I'm gonna discuss this is the page of the reprint, not the page of the bill. So just count the pages as their regular pages, not the pages that they are on the actual bill. All right, so on page one of the reprint, uh, the amendments add sections 13301 and 13408 of the commercial law. These are technical changes that deal with some amendments to the penalties that we'll get to later. On page three of the reprint, uh, section 14401 is a definition section. After line 28, the amendment strike the definition of biometric identifier and substitu substitutes a definition of biometric data. Uh, please note also that throughout the bill, biometric identifier is changed to biometric data. And I'm, I'm not gonna point it out every single time that it's mentioned, but anytime it says biometric identifier, it's now biometric data. Um, on page five of the reprint, section 14402 deals with the required written policy. In line 16, the amendments extend the timeline under which a private ent entity must destroy biometric data. 
uh, from, within, from one year after the individual's last interaction with the private entity to three years. This brings it in line with other uh, biometric privacy bills. Um, starting on page six of the reprint, the order of sections 14403 and 14404 are switched for just a better logical flow. Um, on page seven of the reprint after line nine, uh, the new section 14403, which was 14404, provides an amendment to the requirement that written consent is necessary for a private entity to collect, use, disclose, or redisclose um, an individual's biometric data. More specifically, a private entity that collects and uses biometric data for fraud, fraud prevention, security purposes, and human resource employment purposes have to post a conspicuous notice at the collection of the biometric data, of the collection of the biometric data at the collection point. The notice must, must include the categories of biometric data to be collected and the purposes for which the biometric data will be used. The amendments also authorize the Attorney General's Office to determine whether a private entity's use of biometric data qualifies for the fraud prevention, security, or human resources exception. On page eight of the reprint, after line 27, new 144404 removes any references to selling biometric data as section 14402 outright prohibit, prevents the selling of the information, so it's just not necessary. And on pages eight and nine of the reprint, section 14405 amends the penalties for a violation of the bill. Um, the amendments make a violation of, of the bill an unfair, abusive, or deceptive trade practice and subject to the penalty stated within, um, except for the private right of action. Um, the amendment goes a little bit further to state that if and only if a private entity violates section 14403C, which is the prohibition on selling, leasing, trading, or otherwise profiting from the biometric data, then an individual may bring a private action against the, uh, the private entity in accordance with um, what's already there in, um, in law. And that's what the amendments do. Okay, so um, we want to step through the sections and then we can have any questions on any of that. Would you like to proceed that way, Council? That'd be best. Um, sure. sure. So do you <laughs> Whatever have... works for you. Okay, I think, I think we have a question. I don't see a hand up yet, but what? Uh, I do see a hand mouse. up. Okay, wait, wait, there it is. There it is, mouse, yes. Oh, thanks, Madam Chairman. I'll get things rolling Friday morning, you know, right out the box. Um, the, the, um, uh, the requirements for, um, for notice, um, can, can you go through those? Can you explain those one more? Uh, can you go over those again? I just want to make sure. sure you understand them. And this is, so I, under, I also understand what we're referring to with um, um, biometric data is uh, we're talking video information, pictures, things like that, not not like DNA and stuff like that, right? Okay, so Susan, which question which question would you like me to take first? You can go in your order, whatever. Okay, so biometric data, if we go to page three, biometric data is defined as um, biometric data means data generated by automatic, automatic measurements of the biological characteristics of an individual such as a fingerprint, voice print, eye retina, eye iris, or other unique bi biological patterns or characteristics that is used to identify a specific individual. Biometric data does not include a physical or digital photograph, a video or an audio recording, or information collected, used, or stored for healthcare treatment, payment, or operations under the federal uh, HIPAA. So that's the definition of, that's the new definition um, that has been amended to it. This was taken um, from Virginia law. And I will make note um, in, in, this sec, in this definition of biometric data, um, like a face print is, or yes, face print is not included. Um, but yeah, that's what, that's what biometric data is. I think the, the sponsor is shaking her head no, unless she may want to comment. I don't. May I, Madam Chair? Uh, yes, good. Thank you. Um, ap apologies, Council. I believe that even though face print isn't listed, that it mm -hmm. is still 
included as part of biometric data. Oh, no, oh that's, that's fine. I might have misspoke, but I said it's not expressly enumerated in here. Thank you, but it is part of the, thank you, just that clarification. And then, uh, um, and what were the, the, um, um, uh, the requirement the for notice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, so there is a, when you're talking about notice, do you mean notice that they have to give when collecting? Is that the notice? No, the notice that the data is being collected. Um, so if, yeah. if, if enacted, if you go into an environment where this data is being collected, the bill would require, you know, sign it saying X, Y, and Z. Okay, so under the amendments, a private entity can't collect it unless they have written um, consent, unless they are collecting it for fraud, prevention, security, human resources, or human resources and employment purposes. And then if they are collecting it for those purposes, they have to con um, post conspicuous notice at the point of collection um, that biometric identifier, excuse me, biometric data is being collected and the uses for which that data will be, um, and for when it will be used. Also, I, I will point out, there's also something in here, I didn't mention this part, but if they're collecting that data for um, fraud and security purposes, it has to be, their use of it has to be directly tied to that. They can't say they're collecting it for that and then use it for something else. Okay. I didn't mention that in my summary. What section was conspicuous notice in the, in the bill? It's on, well, in the bill that, that wasn't in the original bill as, as introduced. This is something new that's in page seven. Page as seven. At, yeah, as introduced, the bill required a private entity that collected this information to have written um, written notice, period. Regardless, there was no exception for anything. It was right, but we're dealing we're dealing with the amendment now, right? So, right. Yeah. conspicuous notice is on page seven. Okay, thank of you. Of the of the reprint, yes. Of the reprint, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the next the order of hands would be Delegate Watson, Delegate Harrison, and Delegate Finnell. Delegate Watson. Yes. Hi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the the, uh, the Maryland Chamber of Commerce raised one issue that I, I wanted us to think about and discuss, <clears throat> which has to do with um, Section 14.4403. When it talks about <clears throat> the bill giving a private right of action attached to the sale, lease, or trade of an individual's biometric data, but it, but it says sale, lease, trade, or otherwise profit from. The chamber is concerned that that otherwise profit terminology is too broad. So for example, if they were to use biometric data um, to innovate their own product and they give the example of Nest or Ring, if they were improving their product by using the biometric data that they collected, would that be considered uh, nest or ring profiting from the biometric data? Um, so I wanted to throw that out there and see what you all think. Now I did talk to the sponsor and she said that the direct profit language is in another state's law. And I think that must be where it came from, but um, the question is, can we better define that otherwise profit from so that there is no, or there is less ambiguity? And the sponsor suggested perhaps directly profit from, I, I don't know, but it's really something I wanted the um, attorneys and uh, everyone to think about. Because I mean, just, what I'm saying here, and I do agree with this, is that we, we need to allow companies to innovate, right? Because when they innovate, oftentimes products are get better for consumers and sometimes they get less expensive for consumers. So how do we allow innovation but not profit? That's the question I have. If anyone has any suggestions or thoughts. Um, Council, are we just collecting these and we will address them all at some other point in time? Yeah, okay. Is that it, Delegate Watson? Oh, it is for now, thanks. Okay, no problem. Uh, Delegate Harrison. 
Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I hope I hope that you would just um, beg, I beg my indulgence here. I'm trying to understand first the the what the the purpose behind this bill. What what I've gotten a lot of um, uh, advocates, I guess, reaching out to me about about the bill. And so I guess before I ask any questions, I, I, I guess I need to understand really what it is that we are trying to do, trying to fix, or um, the I guess the purpose behind the bill so that I can wrap my head around some of the discussion that has come my way. Would you, can I um, ask that? Yeah, you may ask that. Um, uh, Council, do you want to answer it or we want to let the uh, sponsor answer it? Um, I can hand, handle it or if the sponsor wants to, it's, it's, it's up to you, it's your choice. Like, sponsor, do you want to say why you're presenting this bill? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, thank you, Delegate Harrison, for the question. The reason um, I have brought this bill is because there has been an explosion in this area. And companies are more and more collecting our unique identifiers um, without our knowledge or consent. Um, you can walk into a store and they, um, they can either have security cameras, which are fine, or they can have cameras that um, run facial recognition on us. And, um, you know, our fingerprints, our voice prints are used and collected more and more. And there are really no rules on them. When they're collected, how they're collected, whether we even know that they're being collected and what's done with them once they are collected. Um, and so there have been a number of instances, you know, there was a 14 year old um, uh, black girl that was kicked out of a skating rink because the skating rink used facial recognition that misidentified her. Um, facial recognition has a pretty high error rate when it comes to people of color. And so we have a number of instances where people have been, um, you know, the young girl kicked out of the skating rink and having to stand outside alone um, because she was misidentified, you know, a young man who was accused of shoplifting when he had not been in that store before and, and on and on. So there are a number of examples there um, that add to the concern. And then you also have um, a lot of instances where this information has been misused or mis mishandled, left on a public database, been hacked, so it has been exposed. So this bill is intended to put some guardrails. It's not stopping companies from collecting the data, from using it for security purposes. If I wanna use my you know, phone and use my fingerprint or my face print, or you know, I use my fingerprint on my computer, none of that is prohibited. It's just creating guardrails so that we, the individuals who, you know, we can't change our face print, we can change our password, so that we know when this is being collected and that we have some control over it. So that's that's what's behind it. Thank you. So that that does happen. And I do, re I do remember um, this being said when we first heard it in, in the full committee. So thank you for bringing that back to my remembrance. Um, so a couple of things, just questions from uh, what you just said. Um, one, um, we talk about the, the facial recognition and the thumbprints like on our phones. So then an individual, um, if, I, if, if on my iPhone, the way that I unlock it is to look at it however you do. So then essentially Apple or the phone manufacturer, whomever, is collecting that information. Is that what you're referring to? And then um, how do they, how, and then what is it that they're doing with it? So yes and no. Actually, in the case of the phone, that's, that's on your phone. That's actually not being collected by Apple. So that was, that was raised earlier by some of the opponents saying you're no longer going to be able to do this. And, and that's not the case. Illinois has had this law for a decade and people there still use their Apple phones. Um, okay. What we're, what right. we're talking yeah, what we're talking about is, um, for example, Rite Aid. 
um, was using facial recognition um, and was intentionally putting it in lower wealth areas and areas of color in their stores there. Um, so we want to make sure that if a company is doing that, that you know, customers know it, know it um, and that the customer has certain rights about getting um, access to that and, and um, that that data isn't stored forever. Does that okay. answer your question? Yes. Um, and then the, the other question then is um, one of the um, um, issues that was brought to me was in the case of casinos and they use, I guess, this technology or something similar um, for pretty much protection, I guess, between um, individuals who may have um, been a nuisance in the property um, or their properties, if it's more than one, um, or um, also individuals who, um, um, when I say a nuisance, may have caused trouble within the other individuals. I don't know if they have a, a, a habit that, that I, I don't know if that's a good example, but, a, a, you know, a gambling habit and, and trying to, I don't know, stop. I don't that may not be a good example. So let me just scratch that one. <laughs> no, but, I understand. Um, yeah. But, you know, that, that was one of the things that, that was brought to my attention. And then the other issue is the private right of action, which I'm not really clear about. I don't know that I truly understand that. So at some point during the discussion, if we could um, maybe um, address that and for some of us um, folks who don't have a law degree, <laughs> If we could just break it down a little bit more. So I think, um, okay. yeah, so I think I'll let the council talk about what we've done with private right of action. And if you want to talk about um, the casino part, I think we try to address that too. Is that okay? Fine with me. I'm willing to listen. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, which part would you like me to address first, Delegate? Do you want me to? Okay, well, since I'm on the private right of action page, that's what we'll go for. So um, the bill as introduced um, said that an individual who's alleged a violation, so basically um, they're saying a private entity took their biometric identifiers and sold them, then they would be able to do a private right of action, which is a civil action, just, just a regular lawsuit. They would be able to go to a court and say, this happened, I would like to be, I would like some redress for these issues. Um, it provided for the penalties. Um, you, I don't know if you want me to go into detail with the penalties, but they, they provided monetary penalties, reasonable attorney fees, and other relief such as an injunction, which would say you have to stop doing this. So that's what a private, a private right of action is basically just saying that you as a private citizen, you can go and you can sue this private entity for um, taking your biometric identifiers. So the amendments, what the amendments did is they made it a um, unfair, abusive, or deceptive trade practice within the meaning of the commercial law article. Okay, so um, that's basically the attorney general has authority to um, investigate. And basically it, it takes it from the hands of, the, um, of a lawsuit to the attorney general investigating. And the attorney general, they have systems and things of that nature as to how they investigate and what they do. They can then, um, do a civil penalty. I think it's up to ten thousand dollars, and like ten thousand um, dollars. I think it's also a criminal penalty of maybe one thousand um, dollars and up to one year in jail. Is that correct? Um, yes. Okay, I was making sure. Technically, it's correct, time. but it's never okay. Been done. Okay, but it's never done. Okay. Never. Um, but that's what's in law. That's what they're authorized to do. Um, there's also a another section um, which allows for a private right of action under the um, unfair, unfair abusive and deceptive trade practice statute. Um, but the amendments took that part out and said that that's only available to someone if they sell, if the private entity sells their biometric identifiers or biometric data. That's an and may I add? Okay, Office Attorney General, yes, for clarity. Uh, just, uh, it's only actual damages for the violation. So you can't get penalties or anything. The 13408 only calls for actual damages. 
So it's much more limited. So I think in essence, Delegate Harrison, we took that from the individual doing a suit and taking it over to the Office of Attorney General to process that and, and uh, do any sort of a suit if, if, if it qualifies for that. Uh, do you wanna talk to the casino piece, uh, Council? Oh, okay. Um, that is on page seven of the reprint. And that's what that, um, the exception was kind of intended for. Um, they're saying that they're using it for fraud prevention and security purposes. So if somebody's going to use biometric identifiers for fraud or pre fraud prevention or security purposes, then they would have to post conspicuous written notice that, hey, we're taking your biometric identifiers and this is what we're doing for or doing it for. And they are also limited to um, using it just for that purpose. Um, and um, yeah, just for that purpose. And they only use what is strictly necessary for the fraud prevention and security purpose. That's part of the amendment. So in, we hope that this, um, that this amendment will address people who use it for fraud and security purposes. Did that answer your question, Delegate Harrison? I'm good for right now. Okay, very good. Thanks. Delegate for now. Thank you, Madam Chair. My um, question has been uh, asked and has been answered, so thank you. I'm going to uh, lower my hand. Thank you. Okay. Delegate Adams. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, so I, I guess to, to counsel, just to follow up on Delegate Watson, who had good points that, was, that were being raised, define profit. I'm sorry? Define profit. I would assume that means um, gaining some kind of financial be benefit. Okay. Are you suggesting we need to put that into statute, what profit is? Well, I, I, I would say the exact opposite. Unless the legislative intent is met because we specifically need to include that part, I, I'm just simply saying, how do you define profit? That's, and, and it's, a, it's almost an ask and answer. That's, that's such an ambiguous uh, phrase. And we're talking about law. We're talking about a, a potential court proceeding. And I'm, I'm simply asking... And I, there may be an answer. I'm just asking from a, from a, from council as we're drafting legislation. How do we define that? Yeah, it's not defined in legislation, but I'm just giving you my answer. But if you would like us to try to see if we could define profit and discuss, well, on this one point, the question is: Could we meet the legislative intent of the the of the bill without having to go down a uh, ambiguous? Uh, path. Uh, that's the first you know, question, which uh, counsel, obviously that is an open question for the moment. <clears throat> um, the other one uh, does go to uh, the private right of action. So during the hearing, uh, there, there was testimony about, uh, was it Illinois? Um, mm -hmm. How many, uh, mm -hmm. so they were talking about the, the, the degree of class action uh, lawsuits. What was that testimony during the hearing? How, how many or? I don't, I don't it? have particular numbers. I can go look in there if you want me to, but it was a lot. It, as soon as they, um, there was testimony that as soon as the private right to action part was opened up, that um, a lot of people started filing suits because you didn't have to prove actual damages. So a lot of people started filing suit and it kind of became a cottage industry in Illinois. Cottage industry. That, so, so in other words, they're actually the, the testimony was that, you know, perhaps Illinois is actually trying to go backwards. That's my memory on the testimony. In other words, you're trying to narrow it. Um, the, the, I guess the last question uh, with the with with the bill has to do with the attorney general. Uh, and, I, and I guess, Steve, you and I've had good back and forth. But uh, I'm, uh, Hannah, if you'd like to answer you know, the question, it looks like in the bill, you uh, that there is the division shall have the authority to determine whether a private entity's use of biometric data qualifies as an appropriate purpose listed in the paragraphs of this subsection. So in, in your own words, what's that asking your department to do, your division to do? Um, it, it's effectively just enforcing the Consumer Protection Act, which is where we investigate and if there's a pattern in practice. Um, in general, that's what we have the authority to do, is so, to determine. 
make let, that let determination. Try. All right. So Hannah, let me try this a different way. You, you are, uh, you are being charged under this bill to determine whether uh, a business is in the security business. Is that, is that correct? Uh, so we are being charged, we are being <clears throat> given the authority to determine whether there's a legitimate security purpose to what they're doing and that their collection and use is pursuant to that purpose. All right. So, so my, I, I guess my roundabout question ultimately goes to if we have an Illinois law where there were 1,100 uh, court cases, uh, which creates broad concerns with legislation like this, and then narrow it down to your department, how can you reasonably come to conclusions about who is and who's not in the security business without very strict and narrow definitions that speak to legislative intent? It, it seems like you're being given a great deal of discretion uh, to make that uh, determination. Would you, I mean, that, that's, uh, would you agree or disagree in that statement? Well, I would say that we would investigate and get information from the company about how they're collecting it, what they're collecting it for, um, and then make that determination in the same way that we make a determination that a uh, practice is unfair and deceptive trade yeah. practice. So, so, Madam Chair, I, I just I, what I'll say is that on this bill, uh, that there may be good and rational reasons for the reason why it's here. The legislative intent, I think, seems to make uh, some sense to me, but you know, I, I get lost when we you know, create this private right of action uh, conversation. Uh, you know, there's, uh, and, and it, it should be simple to explain, but, you know, we have a, a very strong arm of, of the attorney general's office that, uh, in my opinion, knows how to deal with these things, probably already has the power to deal with this under existing law. And uh, I'll listen in. I, 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 I think this is an interesting conversation, but I'll, I'll just stop now since we're not voting today. Well, I think you make a good point. And I think one of the points we were trying to do with the amendment is to put it in the hands of the Office of Attorney General that has more discretion and, and, and experience with this sort of thing. So I think that is uh, where the amendments is trying to uh, bring this bill towards and the, and, and the council is. Uh, shaking the, yeah, well, chair. If we were, yeah, if so, if we chair, if we were going to remove the private right of action, and then if after two or three years there's this testimony from the attorney general's office, oh my goodness, we've got hundreds or thousands of complaints, and we don't have the ability to to frankly manage this. That there's such a a, a problem here. You know, I, I think that's where you may turn to. You know the private. Well, that that's the private sector, right? The trial bar. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it, under the circumstance, um, I don't doubt Steve Sakamoto Wingo and Hannah Abrams' competency and capability to um, see this through without having this private right of action part. That that's so. Thank you, well, Madam Chair. Yeah. May I just for some for I was going to get Adams. I am going to let you do that. I, I just okay, want to um, make this comment that I think we. Delegate Adams, I do think that's part of what we're trying to think through first. And so we need to figure out what's the best approach going forward. We may need to change down the line, but we do need to have an approach going forward. Yes, Steve. Yeah, I just wanted to note that on the private right of action under the Consumer Protection Act does require that actual damages have been suffered. So that is, uh, is different from what we were talking about in Illinois. Thank you for that clarity. Um, Yes, counsel, sure. Yeah, <clears throat> just kind of going off um, what Steve said, just wanna make it clear that the amendments do strike the private right of action and it makes it um, the unfair, abusive and deceptive trade practice and only in a very limited situation where someone sells or leases or trades the information is a person allowed to then go and um, seek the private right of action that's under the Consumer Protection Act which as they just said, you can only get actual damages for. Part of the reason that the Illinois, um, the whole Illinois debacle is because you didn't have to prove actual damages to, um, to prevail. So that was part of the issue and, and thought, <clears throat> excuse me, by taking that out and leaving it to the consumer protection Right of right of, private right of action, you're taking that away because you do have to prove actual damages. Oh. So I'm back to the profit conversation. That, that's uh, if we well, narrow it. And we yeah. can fix that. 
Yeah, yeah okay. Crawford, we got to, I think we can talk to, I'm sure the Office of Attorney General has dealt with other things related to profit. They're dealing with price gouging and other things. So I, I'm sure we have a, a working definition of profit someplace. Um, Delegate Watson. Yes, thank you. Um, so just on, on the discussion we just had, what the council was saying basically is the, the amendment sort of tries to balance out um, from a strict, straight private right of action to something that can, can be a private right of action under certain circumstances. Is that right? Right. Okay, and I think, I think that strikes a balance that makes sense for this sort of groundbreaking legislation in Maryland. Um, and, and as the chair said, it can be reviewed in the future if necessary. So I wanted to move to a, another topic, which is about when people ask for information, um, the, the bill says that they can get their information by requesting it from the company free of charge. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Um, council, yes. Okay, so the, the one concern that's come up is, um, you know, you, you wouldn't think that somebody would ask for this more than once, but there are circumstances where people repeatedly ask for information to be provided to them over and over and over again, every you know certain period of time. If the carry, if the if the company is collecting data on a regular basis. The question is, is there ever a scenario where it would be, it would make sense to allow the company to charge for the information being requested? That's something I think we should think about. I don't know what the answer is, but we, we've seen in the public sector repeated requests for public information and we allow the public sector to charge for that under certain circumstances. Um, so, do we need to have some kind of um, safety net in there in, in that case? That's just a question I have. I don't know the answer. Okay, question is noted. Um, I know the sponsor had her hand up, but we're, we will get to her last if we need a comment. I want to get uh, any questions or comment from Delegate Pippi, who, uh, okay, Delegate Harrison raised her hand again, but I hadn't heard from you yet. So you're very quiet. Any, any comments from you, Delegate Pippi? No, no, uh, less, less is more for me today. <laughs> less is more. Okay, great. Delegate Harrison. Yeah, so um, Delegate Watson was just talking about companies um, that, that are requesting such information. Can, I, can someone give me an example of who might be requesting this information? And, you know, maybe an example of how it could be used. And then also under... Um, the definition of personal information, it talks about household. So when I hear household, I think about my children and my husband. And is that something that I should be concerned about with? I mean, if they're trying to get, if they're looking at my biometric data, why is, why is it necessary to have information about my household, I guess? So I guess that was two questions, and I'm not sure to whom it would the question would be addressed or who would answer the question. Council, do you do you know the information? I think on I can answer the first question. First one, um, yeah. Yes. So, correct me if I'm wrong, Delegate Watson, but I believe what you were talking about was. Um, when a individual asks a private entity for the information, is that right? What? For, yeah, for, so. I guess for, for their information and what their information is that they've collected and how they have used it. I believe the bill allows that to happen for yes, free. Yes, yes. So I think Delegate Harrison, you asked, um, why would somebody be asking for that information? It's an individual asking about their, own, asking the private entity for their own information, unless I misunderstood your question. Well, I was just trying to follow what um, the what Delegate Watson was referring to um, when she she was talking about something different about you know it being requested over and over for free. But yes, so but, so what she's talking about is in, is like if I 
asked a private entity, if a private entity had my biometric identifiers and I knew that, and I was like, hmm, what, what exactly do they have? Me as an individual asking the private entity for what they have, what information they have on me. What Delegate Watson was saying is what if somebody's asking this like 24 times a year, is there a point where, and, we and they have to give it for free. So is there a point where that's inappropriate and maybe we should ask, and maybe the private entity will be able to charge. That, that was her question. So it was an individual asking for the information, okay. not a private entity asking for another private entity's does that Does that happen? Could that happen under this? A private entity asking for another person's biometric identifiers? I think that would be uh, selling and trading. Okay. Which isn't allowed. Okay, that's or, fine. I mean, or unless, unless they're a processor, that, that's a different situation. Okay. I get that. Okay. And then, but so then we, so under the definitions, under the personal information, we talk about household in there. So would, so would an entity who is collecting the biometric data be looking at my household uh, as it relates to personal information here? I'm trying to understand this part of it. You know, I'm going to be honest. I, I do not know. I can look that up. Um, but it says be reasonably linked to. So I I don't know. I can look that up for you. Yeah, I just would be concerned because the first thing I think about is my children. And then I think about, you know, my husband who, you know, that, that's another definition under the law about being one and da, 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 da. But my children to me are always off limits. And so um, I would be concerned about that. If, if it had something to do with me, I wouldn't want my children to, um, I don't know, to, I, I wouldn't want any adverse information about them. Um, and, you know, particularly in um, the example that Delegate Love gave earlier. So, uh, okay, well, thank you. If you could find that out and how, how that would relate to the biometric data that's here that we're talking about. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, we'll look at that. I think, I think that may have been a, a, was that a carryover when we were talking about employers or something? I don't know, but we'll look at that. Delegate Adams. Well, I actually think that Delegate Harrison was asking a very good question. And as I was listening to the answer, I think it looks like we're going to get some more follow up on that because it's a very good point she's making. You, your question is about households as well? I've, I, yes. I, so I don't, I, I don't have anything to add right now. Okay. Because we answered her question, I think, between individuals and, and, and entities. I think we clarified that. So the household piece is the part you're saying, Delegate Adams, you want more clarity on. I, I, yes. Okay, understood. Yes, Delegate Love. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I believe I can answer Delegate Harrison's question if you would like, or I can wait. No, you can certainly, because this you should know, because that's the intent of your bill. What was it addressing? Yeah, so um, I believe the only time that is used, um, that phrase, personal information, and I believe it's... Um, defined elsewhere in law, but council can mm -hmm. confirm that for me. But the only place that's used is when it talks about um, a company has to hold this information um, basically secure, uh, the same as or more secure than it holds other personal information. So that's, that's the only time that definition and that um, phrase comes into play in the bill. But you're, you're absolutely right. Delegate Harrison, uh, with respect to children and, and their biometric data, and that's part of what we're, we're looking at as well. Thank you. Okay, um, so we're getting to 10 minutes of, I think we've had a good uh, dialogue. Uh, hopefully anyone who had questions about the bill uh, that has been, um, at least have noted them and we, can, we will go and look at some of these issues that have been raised. Any other, oh, okay. Any others have any questions about this? So as we talked about, this is this was discussion today, wanna work on this and um,
delicate ha Harrison's hands is raised again. Okay, that's good. Uh, good all to right. have you on it. Good to have you on this uh, committee, and I I know to always come back to you before I end. But um, no, I'm usually usually not. But I'm um, just um, so I know we we heard. Um, um, testimony about um, Illinois and that, and you know, there were a number of cases filed there that was under something. Are there any other states that are doing this, and are there and have they been successful? <laughs> um, I think that I understood that Texas and Virginia maybe has something. Are they successful, or is it? Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. I'll leave that. Do you, do you want to answer Delegate Love or do you want me to? Whatever the chair prefers. I prefer that the council answer it. Okay. There's um, a number of states that have tried to do this. Um, some have big omnibus bills um, that incorporate all of privacy. Some just deal with um, biometric identifiers. I'm trying to find Delegate Harris and I don't know where to look. Okay. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, the ones, some have private right of action, which like Illinois has, some have just the attorney general um, as the enforcement reg regulator. I think um, there have been issues with both. I, I, will, I will say that. There have been issues with, with both ways of trying to enforce this. I hope that answers your question. And I think I want to, I think I would just add to that, Delegate Harrison, uh, we're looking at what other states have done and trying to marry the best practices uh, across uh, across the board while trying to address the concerns that the sponsor wanted to raise. So I think we're looking at that and, and that's what you're seeing from the, the amendments and things that you're hearing. Does that answer your question? Okay, do you have, you feel like you need, you would like to make a comment, Delegate Love? No, oh, thank you. Just thank you all very much for your consideration. Okay, well, I wanna thank you guys too for, for this, as I've said, we got a lot of questions uh, answered, but we have some others that we're going to look at, but uh, we will try to bring this to some kind of conclusion and vote on Monday, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for your okay. time. Um, yes. Madam Chair, real quick. You said Monday. Do you have any idea like when <laughs> on Monday? I mean, afternoon or morning or? I think we tentatively say what 10 a.m. Monday Probably morning. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I got That's a ribbon. I got a ribbon cutting. Uh, I'm not so oh, junk. It's a big deal. I've been working hard on this thing. Well, you need to go to your ribbon cutting. Okay. Well. No, no, so, I'll be there for no, 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 no. You, you guys, send me some time on Monday. That might be good, and we'll try to figure it. Hopefully, will not be a long. Will right. not be long. Okay. okay. Maybe maybe one one because Monday is bad for me. Monday morning. Okay. Just 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 send me some 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 idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Happy Bye -bye. Friday. Friday.